begins. Greetings, folks. Anilor Horam here with the World of Warships replay, this time submitted by Lynn Wilkie in the Tier 7 German battleship, the Gneisenau. Lynn is divisioned with USS Clark W. Griswold in the premium Tier 7 aircraft carrier, the Saipan, and with myself in the Tier 7 U.S. Navy light cruiser, the Helena. We are in a standard battle on neighbors, and each team brings one aircraft carrier, five battleships, three cruisers, and three destroyers to the match. As far as ship upgrades and commander skills for Linz Gneisenau, there's a very heavy focus on AA, and we'll talk more about the Gneisenau's AA as the match develops. Other highlights in addition to the Gneisenau's AA will be that this will be a very solid match for this battleship. It won't be the no most number of achievements or number of kills or highest damage, but the results will be very strong indeed. And it will also highlight some very mindful battleship play that Lynn will exhibit on knowing when to push versus when to retreat as a battleship player. So let's get to the gameplay. So given that this is standard battle, it is pretty common that teams tend to be kind of skittish moving out, trying to figure out where each other are going to end up going. It definitely helps to have an aircraft carrier to spot some ships early on. We're going to spot uh, Sims here in just a moment. And uh, because this is neighbors, uh, it is very common that both teams tend to gravitate toward the islands that are in the northeast quadrant of the map. Now we do have a handful of ships, including myself, and a couple of battleships in this and our allied Gnevni that have moved more towards the west and south flank uh, in order to head off any opposing ships that might be moving up, down that way, including a Fujin that we have just detected. Uh, but by and large, the majority of the allied team and frankly, the vast majority of the opposing team will be up here in sort of the north and northeast uh, sections of the map. Now, Lin is uh, a battleship main. He has a very good sense of map awareness, of situational awareness, among the best that I've ever seen. He has a very good sense of uh, when it makes sense to push as a battleship player, when it makes sense to pull back. He uh, is not afraid to push at all. He's actually quite more, quite a bit more aggressive than I am in similar ships. Uh, he as a battleship main. Again, he knows that a key part of his job is to basically lead the battle. Uh, now, destroyers uh, will tend to be out front, obviously, for spotting and for screening for torpedoes and opposing destroyers, but it is the battleship that is the leader of the battle by and large. And they are also responsible for um, drawing a lot of the fire and taking the shots for the team. They have the most health, they have the best armor, they have a repair party to heal themselves. And so a big part of the battleship's job is to uh, is to lead the way. Now, Lin is also going to end up being the most uh, leading battleship here on this uh, flank, and at some point in the not too distant future, he's going to realize that he's going to need to turn around uh, so that he doesn't get focused out by the opposing team. And speaking of getting focused, uh, the opposing aircraft carrier has decided to put some fire or put an attack on Lin. But this is a mistake, uh, and obviously the aircraft carrier didn't know this until he got up here, but because Lin has such a strong AA build, he's basically able to shoot down all planes that approach him, uh, as long as he's, he's able to detect them and it's not during a storm where you only pick up the aircraft when they're within a kilometer of you. Uh, the Gnais now has, uh, if it's specced correctly, has astoundingly powerful AA, uh, if you fully spec into AA with the ship upgrades, with the commander skills, and including the AA signal, you can get the AA rating of the Gnais now to 96, which is very high. And a key reason that is, is because the B hull of the Gnais now, all of the secondaries are 128 millimeter dual purpose turrets, whereas the A hull 
uh, four of the turrets are 150 millimeters. So the Gneisenau, so the, uh, I'm sorry, the Scharnhorst, which is the Gneisenau's sister ship, the Gneisenau has essentially the secondaries of the Gneisenau's A hull, where you have uh, you have four fewer 128 millimeter uh, secondary turrets. Uh, but you, uh, and instead you have four 150 millimeter turrets, but those 150 millimeter turrets are, uh, don't provide any AA. So the Gnais now with all 128 millimeter secondaries turrets uh, gets very powerful long range AA. In fact, it's AA, if fully spec'd, is more powerful than the Atlantas. Uh, across all ranges. Now, granted, the Gneisenau does not carry defensive fire, but if you put on the manual AA control skill on your commander, as Lin has, you basically you double the strength of the long-range AA from 150 to 300 uh, damage per second, uh, which is very high, especially at this tier. And so the Gneisenau is a very powerful anti-aircraft ship, and can hold its own uh, against most aircraft carriers. Now, uh, the Lyon, uh, the French Tier 7 battleship, uh, which was obviously recently introduced, uh, has similarly powerful AA, uh, and I'm not entirely sure, but I think it can spec to be slightly more powerful than the Gnais now, but effectively speaking, they're, they're the same. So coming back to Lynn's gameplay here, the, um, if you can see, uh, if Lin had continued north, like we see where this Miyoko, his allied Miyoko is at Charlie 1, he likely would have been squeezed out and then the, uh, the opposing team would have been able to put a wedge in and would have uh, trapped him from being able to retreat. So Lin knew uh, well enough that he needed to retreat. So again, he has no problems pushing uh, and there will be plenty of pushing uh, as a battleship here in the not too distant future. Uh, but right now he knows to retreat here and uh, gain some ground and some flexibility so that he doesn't get uh, pincered or at least surrounded by the opposing team and then focused out. Now conversely, the, in fact, uh, the, the Mexico, which was uh, to his northeast, has been focused out and the opposing Miyoko is also extremely low health. So those ships that had moved north uh, have been taken out or are about to be taken out by the opposing team. Now, in contrast, this opposing Gneisenau that is trailing off or was trailing off behind uh, Lin, he had overextended. Uh, and so he was focused out and has been taken out of the game. Now, the opposing team does have a two-ship advantage here, uh, but if you notice, uh, one thing that has happened is that myself and our allied Genevni, whom we ended up losing, uh, made it up the west flank and took out the sole opposing ship that had moved down the west side, which was the Fujin, have taken that out. Um, all of the opposing team, other than the Sims, have basically uh, sort of meandered away from their cap and I'm actually in their cap, and we've now detected the sims because I have the hydroacoustic search up, and I'll be able to put some f uh, focus on the opposing sims here in a moment and take him out of the match. Now, the um, opposing team, again, still has a two-ship advantage, um, although we are, and there I've just taken out the sims. Uh, now they have a one-ship advantage. And Lin knows that now, um, looking at his position, He's able to now push back up and will be able to start uh, putting pressure on the opposing team. Uh, we've now taken out the Fushin, which was on the far east side of the map. So now the opposing team has no destroyers. And the only torpedo threats that uh, Lin has are a couple of cruisers and the Scharnhorst, all of whom he will be able to detect easily well before he gets into torpedo range. So all the torpedo, the key uh, sort of uh, surprise torpedo threats or stealth torpedo threats have been addressed. So Lynn's going to push back in here and put some pressure on the, the batch of opposing players that are uh, moving back towards their cap. 
We have now even the ship count, and because we've gotten into their cap, we've stopped them from accumulating points, and uh, so we've now taken the lead from the team. Now, most of these battleships, that uh, opposing battleships, are in very good health, and uh, you know this could be a potential risk for Lin. So he's got to be careful about how he approaches these battleships. He's looking to get the Fiji down first because the Fiji is the main threat to me being in the cap. You can see that the opposing Kiryu, the aircraft carrier, is moving into the cap. And this is frankly a, a good idea for him to be able to stall uh, my advance on the cap. Uh, but he's going to make the mistake here of coming around the corner. I'm not sure entirely what his thinking was. And I'll be able to get a dev strike on him, taking him out of the match. But... Otherwise, what Lin is doing right now is he's putting focus on the opposing uh, Fiji that is approaching the cap and keeping some island cover between himself and most of the other battleships so that he doesn't get focused out. There I have just taken out the opposing aircraft carrier, and now we're going to get a spot on the opposing Fiji. Now, there's a replay glitch here. It says he's locked on to the Sharn Horse, but in reality, he's actually locked on to the Fiji. And with that salvo, he will finish off the Fiji. So now Lin is in a position that he, two of the four opposing battleships, uh, the uh, New Mexico and the Sharn Horse, are actually focused on getting to the cap. And so Lin is having to focus now on just two battleships. Uh, the first is the Colorado that's directly in front of him, and the other is the uh, Queen Elizabeth. Queen Elizabeth is offering a much better uh, profile for him, so he's able to get some very good pens in. And this is where, in addition to the secondaries, this is a place where the Gnais now shines in close balling situations, obviously, is with the torpedoes. He's going to get a four, full torpedo salvo, no flooding, but uh, does uh, take it out the majority of the remaining health of the opposing Colorado. You see the torpedo indicators behind them. That is from an allied battleship, or allied destroyer, excuse me. Uh, and then he, on the other side of the ship, he's going to send the other set of torpedoes. Obviously, the Queen Elizabeth was looking to try to get a ram in before the torpedoes came off, but it's too late. And, he, and Lynn is able to take the Queen Elizabeth out of the match. The opposing Colorado was also finished off, and so Lynn has no... Uh, opposing ships on his uh, flank and so now he's able to concentrate on the, the New Mexico and the Scharnhorst. There is the High Caliber Award so that is the first of two heroic achievements he will uh, get in this match and Lynn is now going to change his focus uh, to the Scharnhorst which is uh, approaching my position. There's only two opposing members of the team at this point, uh, these two battleships that we can see. So we've got this game pretty well locked up at this point and mainly focused on uh, getting some damage in. Now, I, I should also note that um, despite the fact that Lin is not a secondary build, he's already managed to get uh, well in excess of 90 secondary hits uh, thanks to the close quarter engagements that he's had. Now, the 128 millimeters, even though they do get the one quarter pen benefit that German battleships enjoy, uh, they tend not to do much damage. Uh, there's the Confederate award. Uh, they tend not to do a lot of damage to opposing battleships because secondaries focus on hitting the center part of the ship. So a lot of, if, especially if you're in close quarters, very close quarters, like within a couple of kilometers, the secondaries will tend to hit the main belt and will tend not to uh, do much in the way of damage. Also notice that Lind here is uh, focusing uh, on shooting at the upper belt of these battleships to try to improve his pen options. There he finishes off the opposing New Mexico and he's turning his guns to the Sharn Horse, but the Sharn Horse is burning out thanks to a fire I set on him and our allied aircraft carrier is now getting a drop on the Sharn Horse to finish him off and end the match. So very good match. Uh, uh, Lynn came in top for our team. He earned uh, just over 2,000 base XP, did 180,000 in damage, got three kills, uh, shot down 12 planes early in the match. Uh, and again, the aircraft carrier did not come back to try to strike him again, partly 
I think because of Lynn's AA strength, but also because of the air control that, uh, that his allied aircraft carrier was able to exact on the opposing carrier. So I hope you enjoyed the replay and the commentary. Please do leave your comments below. And as always, we hope to see you out there and wish you happy sailing.